All right, it is Money Monday, a new segment here at 4 o'clock where we talk about easy to understand ways to navigate our finances. And here to help us out is our friend, our financial expert, Paul Hood from Hood CPAs. And we have a lot of questions That's great. today. So let's jump right in with Joy. Sure. Joy says, I hear the word proactive mentioned a lot. How do I know if I am being proactive in my business? Well, proactive, um, and we use that a lot in our practice, proactive just means you're forward looking. It's kind of like, this is the way I explain it, Brian. Let's say you go to the doctor and you're not feeling well. <laughs> and, and, and my, a lot of people hit home with that. You're not feeling well. The first thing that they do is they check your vital signs, right? They get what's your heart rate, and your blood pressure, and all of that. Well, imagine if you go to the doctor and he says, well, your vital signs eight months ago were this, so you should be fine, go home. That's what most people do with their business, is they don't keep, they're, they're, they're evaluating their business and the vital signs of their business eight months ago, or six months ago, or a year ago. And so proactive just means to look forward. To, to what is the, what, how are we doing right now? Are we on pace to get done what we, we need to do? So, you know, you should meet with your accountant once a, once a month at least to go over stuff like that so you can steer your business, if you will. That's proactive. Yeah, good to know. Yeah, tax time isn't the only time to be exactly. evaluating where you stand, right? Exactly. Uh, Don says, I heard a 401k isn't a good investment. Is that true? Okay, well, first off, Don, a 401k is not an investment. Yeah. An IRA is not an investment. A Roth is not an investment. It's what you put into those vehicles, it's the investment. So what's a good investment or a bad investment is really relative. Uh, younger, you, you know, typically you want to be more aggressive. But the reality is, is to be successful investing, you need time, you need diversification, and typically you need a, a professional money manager, somebody that's making those decisions. So a 401k, though, is a great thing to be into because um, it, you're paying, you're, you're saving before you spend. Most people try to save after they spend, and the reality is they don't have any money left. So the power of 401k is the money comes out before you get your paycheck. So 401ks are great. Yeah, gosh, just save it somewhere too, that's right? That's exactly I mean, that's, right. That's basic. Amen. Uh, Larry says, are there things that I can do to avoid an IRS audit? Boy, a lot of people thinking about that this time of year. Sure, so. Nobody wants to be audited, no. let's be honest. Yeah, it's not like people have anything to hide. Maybe right. some do, but it's, it, but it's just the inconvenience. So, you know, there's, the lines that are on your tax return are there for a reason. Um, and so, and the prime, one of the primary reasons is the IRS, and there's a business code on everybody's business or whatever, and so they know statistically a, a plumber uh, should have on average this amount of advertising. And, and if you get above those lines, then, then those amounts, then you can, get, you can get audited. So, you know, you can go to the IRS website, there's places you can see is what is the average amount for this business code. So uh, the second thing is, is that some people, when they come in and bring their tax return to us, they'll have everything lumped into one or two numbers. Well, again, if those numbers are out of the ordinary, you're going to get audited. So it's best to spread those numbers out into the categories that they, that they have. And, of course, file on time and, and those type of things. Pay your taxes throughout the year instead of at the end of the year. All right, quickly, 44 seconds on the clock. Amanda, why should I use a CPA to file my taxes instead of someone else? Last question. Sure. So my business, my industry is kind of strange. You can't practice law without being, having a law degree. You can't be a doctor without having a doctor. But anybody and their dog can go hang a shingle on their, on their wall and uh, say they can do taxes. My tax program costs me about $20,000 a year. And so I'm just, I'm trained and I'm held to a certain standard. So, you know, simple returns, fine, but anything beyond a W-2, you really should seek the advice of a CPA. Yeah. And if they question it, you want to have somebody that That's can right. vouch for you, right? That's exactly right. All right, thank you so much for you your bet, advice Brian. today. And listen, if you have a financial question you'd like me to ask Paul next week, you can send them to moneymondays at griffin.news, moneymonday at griffin.news. Stay with us, we'll be right back.